Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Mr. John Lund in Sinclair Lewis's Aerosmith on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight we are proud to present a dramatization of a story written by a man who has the unique distinction in American letters of having been judged worthy of both the Pulitzer Prize and the Nobel Prize for Literature, Mr. Sinclair Lewis. And the story we present tonight is, I think, one of his finest, Arrowsmith, a story of profound meaning for our times especially. For in Arrowsmith, Sinclair Lewis does what I, as a writer, can tell you is no easy task. He portrays, and as well as it has ever been done, what goes on in the mind of the scientist. And you who read today's newspapers will not need to be told how crucially important this problem is for the world nowadays. To highlight our dramatization of this great story, we have the privilege also of presenting one of Hollywood's newest and most exciting personalities, John Lund. And now before the curtain, here is Frank Gost with a brief message from Hallmark. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, there is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying name on the back, Hallmark, well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, our curtain. <laughs> Hallmark Playhouse, starring John Lund in Sinclair Lewis's Arrowsmith. I sat alone, alone in that house that made one pool of light in the tropic darkness, listening to the soft, venomed whisper of the jungle as it coiled itself around the house. I sat there thinking, who am I? What am I doing here? Where am I going? Where have I been? Where have I been? And the voices of the past began to sift through. Name, please. Martin Arrowsmith. What branch of the university are you entering? The medical. Name, please. Martin Arrowsmith. What branch of the university are you entering? The medical. Name, please. Martin Arrowsmith. What branch of the university are you entering? The medical. The medical, yes. Martin Arrowsmith, freshman, eager, newly hatched. Arrowsmith? Yes, Professor Gottlieb? Observe what I do. Technique is the beginning of science. 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 Professor Max Gottlieb. A voice softly blurred with the culture of another country. A man who could inspire and could crucify. At 21, I entered his classroom. you want to practice medicine, Otto Smith? Oh, no, sir. I'd like to work in research. I'd like to be a bacteriologist. Good. After these past few weeks, I do not think you would make a good doctor. But the research, that is another matter. And it is the important field. Make no mistake about it. Research is the advancing line that moves ahead of the doctors, that makes their work possible. <laughs> The days of those years were a whirlwind. Lectures on physical diagnosis, surgery, neurology, obstetrics, 
Hospital demonstrations, pathology, scientific German, scientific French, exploration of the past and of the possibilities of the future. <laughs> Professor Gottlieb, Something's wrong with these immunology theories. What do you mean something is wrong? Young man, do you set yourself up against science? Do you feel competent to attack the dogmas of immunology? I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Here are my protocols. I've gone over and over the stuff and I get the same results. I only know what I observe. My boy, that is the way. Observe what you observe. And if it does not agree with the nice, correct views of science, then out they go. I'm very pleased, Martin. But now find out the why, the underneath principle. All right, I will. Martin, I've been thinking, would you care to be my laboratory assistant next term? Oh, Professor Gottlieb, I... Oh, I... Well, I then we shall consider it all settled. Those were the days when I plunged headlong into every experiment and every experience that came along. Those were the days when I was engaged to Madeline Fox... And her mother. Those were the days when I met Leora. Professor Gottlieb had sent me on an errand to the hospital. And there was this small probationer nurse scrubbing the floor as I turned the wrong corner and skidded. Hey, watch out! You almost stepped in my scrub bucket. You almost made me break my neck. Why don't you watch where you put your scrub buckets? The scrub bucket has to be where I'm scrubbing. You can walk any place you want. I have to scrub where I'm told to scrub. I'm being punished by the superintendent of nurses. She's showing me the importance of discipline. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, Pretty hard, this training for nurses, I guess. Well, it's about as romantic as being a hired girl in Dakota. You come from Dakota? I sure do. Wheat, Sylvania, North Dakota. You're from the University Medic School, aren't you? Yeah, but uh, I'm not really much of a medic. I'm going to be a bacteriologist. Gee, that's wonderful. Say, would you like to have dinner with me tonight? I'd love to. Seven? I'll be ready. See you then. Hey, what's your name? Leora Tozer. What's yours? Martin Arrowsmith. Hello, Martin Arrowsmith. Hello, Leora. Oh, gosh, you're all dressed. Have you been to bed at all? No. Oh, fine, companionable roommate you turn out to be. I don't know why you bother coming home from the lab at all. You know, someday you're going to be sorry you ever got tangled up with a microbe. What do you do when you're engaged to two of them at once? Oh, Martin. Hey, kid, look, you better lie down. Well, I guess the only thing to do is get them both together. Let them work it out. Who? Madeline and Leora. Oh, no, now he's giving them names. Uh, look, Martin, lie down and let me get a doctor. Doctor? Who wants a doctor? I'm not sick. I'm scared. I'm engaged to two girls at once. Uh, Miss Fox, this is Miss Tozer. How do you do? I, uh, I uh, invited you both to lunch because, uh, I thought that uh, you two should get acquainted. Dr. Arrowsmith tells me you're a nurse, Miss Tozer. Yes, sort of. Do you find it interesting? Oh, yes, yes, I think it's interesting. Do you come from here, Miss Tozer? No, I come from, um, just a little town. (laughs) Well, hardly a town. It's in North Dakota. Oh, way out west. I don't believe we know anyone else from North Dakota, do we, Martin? No, I suppose... I don't think so. Where are you from, Miss... uh, Wolf? Fox. (laughs) Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Fox. I have such a bad memory for names. Where are you from? I'm from here. Right here? Oh, we know lots of people from here, don't we, Martin? Oh, yes, 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 lots of people, yes. Oh... What would you girls like to eat? Oh, you order for me, Martin. You know just what I like. You order for me, too, Martin. You know what I like, too. Look, Madeline, Leora, I uh, don't know how you two feel about each other, but, well, uh, I uh, brought you 
two together because, well, by some strange coincidence, I'm engaged to both of you. And I didn't know what to do except come out and... Engaged to both of us? I'm sorry for you, Miss Totem. Tozer. Tozer. You poor child. You do have a job ahead of you. Goodbye, Martin. Well, darling. Looks as though you're mine by default. Oh, I'm sorry, but I couldn't think of any other way. Martin, you better not get in any more messes like this because I'll never give you up. I'm going to cook for you and sew for you and wait for you to come home at night. And someday the world's going to discover that you're the greatest scientist in it. I'm very much in love with you, Mr. Aerosmith. Hello, Mrs. Aerosmith. I walked back to the lab in a complete daze, planning a wedding, planning a lifetime. I was late. Class was already in session. Gottlieb sent me on an errand immediately. Otto Smith, what have you brought me here? Well, you asked for six female rabbits. I asked for six male rabbits. Oh, uh, oh I'll go back right away. I, I'm sorry, You're sir. sorry. You're sorry. And what do I do with this class while I wait for you to go and return? I'm sorry, but I didn't understand you. I made a mistake. Mistakes in science mean lives. You're an imbecile. You've been mooning around for weeks, acting like a schoolboy, fit for nothing. What good is an assistant who can't even bring me what I require? Get out! You... You mean I'm fired as assistant? I'm glad you have enough intelligence to understand that. Well... Well, that's all right with me. <laughs> And so I left Gottlieb. And Leora and I were married. And those whom God hath joined, let no man put asunder, for now and forever, so long as we both should live. I took her hand in mine and turned off the road I had been traveling. I decided to practice medicine. After all, doctors were more necessary than scientists. Why should I spend my life cooped up in a lab? I'd go out to Leora's part of the country and practice. I'd save lives. I'd be Martin L. Aerosmith, M.D. of Wheatsylvania, North Dakota. And so I graduated. And began the days of my practice. Hello? Yes, Dr. Aerosmith there. This is Mr. Willoughby. My little girl has a stomachache. Hello. Uh, hello, Dr. Aerosmith. This is Walter Lamb. I've hurt my hand. I'd like to come in and have you look at it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just feel bad all over. Mr. Aerosmith, just what kind of a doctor do you think you are? Hmm? Personally, I don't think much of you. You don't? Why not? Well, you haven't said a word about me drinking lots of milk and orange juice, or being careful about lifting things. Milk? Orange juice? Lifting things? Leora! In six months, darling. Six months. Oh, I don't know how I'll ever be able to wait. Six months? Why, Mrs. Aerosmith. Well, well. Say, let's have a boy, shall we? That's exactly what I ordered. One small boy made in the image and likeness of Martin Aerosmith. Six months of waiting, of watching, of worrying, of praying. Six months of illness for Leora. Six months of growing, swelling pain, of terror, torture, agony. Martin. Martin. Martin! I want to be everything to you. Let me be everything to you. There won't ever be another baby, will there? 
No, never another. Darling, darling, if I could only help. Well, if I can't have a real baby, I'll just have to bring you up. I'll help you be a great man like your Professor Gottlieb. Did, did you say Gottlieb, Leora? Yes, I said Gottlieb. I know you've never forgotten him, Martin. For hours we sat together, unspeaking, eternally understanding, in the prairie twilight. Before James Hilton introduces the second act of Aerosmith starring John Lund, here's another star I want you to meet. The lovely little star of Walt Disney's latest picture, So Dear to My Heart, the delightful little Luana Patton. Hi, Luana. Hello, Mr. Goss. Hey, that looks like a party dress you have on. It is, Mr. Goss. I have just been to a party. And look, as a party favor, I got another doll. Another Hallmark doll of the nations? Mm Mm-hmm. Just the one I wanted, too. It's Sing Toy of China. He's beautiful with the feather plume in his hat. I learned a lot about him from the verse inside, too. What did you learn, Luana? Well, did you know his collar buttons in the back and not beneath his chin? He wears his little shirt tail out and never tucks it in. (laughs) Really? What else, Luana? I know that for dinner he has soup and rice and tea most every day. And when he's good, he has an egg his mother bakes in clay. That's fun learning about Sing Toy this way. Sure it is, Luana. The Hallmark Company knew you'd like to know about your little friends all over the world. So they designed these beautiful dolls of the nations and put these cute verses inside them. Here's another part I liked, Mr. Goss. When I read on through the verse, I learned that Sing Toy lives on the other side of the earth. And he's just getting up when I'm going to bed. These verses tell me lots. That's wonderful, Luana. What are you doing with your dolls? Well, I have a collection of them. And I trade with the girls. It's fun. Now I want to get Maria of Mexico and Cowboy Joe. They're beautiful dolls. You bet they are, Luana. Every youngster loves them. The verses, the feather plumes in their hats, and the way they stand up by themselves. A little later, I'm going to tell everyone how little the Hallmark Dolls of the Nations cost and how easy they are to buy and send. But now, back to James Hilton. We continue with part two of Sinclair Lewis's Arrowsmith, starring John Lund. Years of labor, with the memory of Max Gottlieb always somewhere behind my shoulder, and the memory of his words always sounding within me. I was a doctor, I was a health officer... Finally, one day, I submitted a paper which was published in the Journal of Infectious Diseases. And shortly thereafter, I received a letter from Gottlieb telling me that he was now at the McGurk Institute in New York and inviting me to come there and continue my research. And so, at last, I went back to him. Martin, Dr. Tubbs, the head of the McGurk Institute, believes that you may have hit on the supreme way to kill the pathogenic bacteria. Well, I'm not certain of that, sir. Dr. Tubbs thinks that yours may be one of the discoveries of a generation, a serum to eradicate plague. He wants to publish your discovery. I'm not ready to have my notes published. I want to prove them first. I'm glad to hear you say that, my boy. It's the only way. Prove it beyond all shadow of a doubt before you present it to the world. Now... I have a plan for you. There is a plague right now in St. Hubert in the West Indies. If you would go there, inject one group of patients with this serum of yours, and take another group... Oh, I see what you mean. Treat the other group just as you would normally and watch the results. It is a great opportunity. You could make an absolute determination of the value of your discovery. I'll go. I'll do it. I have a friend, also a scientist and doctor, whom I'll send with you. Sandelius. Oh, I've heard of him. He's a good man. Martin. I warn you, you must harden your heart. You must give the serum to one group and keep your eyes fastened on your ultimate goal, which is to end all plagues forever. Yes, sir. God go with you and guide you 
and bring you back. A tramp steamer, a black, starless midnight. St. Hubert, the port of death. Passengers were permitted to land on the island, but once there, none could leave the island until the quarantine was lifted. Leora and Sandelius and I stood on deck watching the launch made fast that was to take us into shore. It's a strange, ghostly sort of night, isn't it? Isn't it? I'm so excited, I'm scared to death. Leora, please, stay on the boat. I can't imagine what I was thinking of to let you talk me into your coming out here. You didn't have a thing to say about it. Well, I wouldn't dream of letting you go off to a plague all by yourself. It would take care of you if you got sick. It would be wiser if you stayed on board, Leora. Go back with the ship. We'll see you in New York in a few weeks. Not on your life. Well, the launch is ready, Martin. The bags and the boxes of medical supplies are already on board. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. <laughs> The drum again. They only wouldn't pound on those drums. Sorry you came? No, I didn't mean that. Where's Sandelius? He's over at the hospital making the rounds again. How many cases? Among the group we inoculated with the serum, one. How about the other half of the parish? Among the ones who weren't inoculated, 30. 30? Well, that proves the serum works. Not yet. It's only the beginning. We have to watch day by day until the epidemic's over. It's too bad you can't give it to everyone. That would ruin the experiment. I know, but if you can save people's lives... We might save a few lives, we wouldn't prove anything. Even if a few die now, their dying may mean that millions will live in the future. That adds up for you, doesn't it? Of course. That's what we came for. Yes. All the same, it's darn hard to say no when they beg for the serum. No one wants to die, darling. Not you... Or I, or any of them. I'll never forget her face that day, or her eyes, or those words that came back to me over and over as I sat by her, helpless. No one wants to die. Not you, nor I, or any of them. No one wants to die. Not you, or I, or any of them. No one wants to die. Not you, or I, or any of them. No one wants to die. Not you. Leora! Oh, Oh, Leora. Leora. Martin, you must pull yourself together. Pull myself together. Why? She's dead, isn't she? Yes, she's dead. All finished and done with. One lifetime. One young, lovely lifetime. Finished, done, buried. Waste, waste. I'm going to give that serum to everyone on the island. As long as it holds out, I'm giving it to everyone on the island. You'll spoil the experiment. You will undo everything you have done. I don't care. If someone lives, if one person lives, I'm not going to sit here any longer controlling the forces of death and life. I'm through with experimentation. I'm through with science. How many nights, how many days did I work giving that serum? I don't know. I only know that at last I sat there alone. Alone in the house, alone in the world, spent, worn out from labor and from grief, and the knowledge that I'd failed myself, failed Gottlieb, failed science. I sat there thinking, who am I? Where am I going? Where have I been? What is there for me now that I've lost Leora? And then the door opened. Martin? Yes? The ships are in the harbor. 
The quarantine is lifted. The epidemic is over. Is it? Yes, and I've got a letter here from Gottlieb. What does he say? He says you must come home and prepare to start your experiment over. I must prepare to start... He says it must be completed properly, and so it must. I will help, and so will he. Now, come. It won't take us long to pack. The ship sails this afternoon. <laughs> Suddenly, I was on my feet, throwing things into suitcases, on my way back to the beginning to start the experiment over. And over and over in my heart, I was saying the prayer I'd learned from Gottlieb. God, give me unclouded eyes and freedom from haste. God, give me a quiet and relentless anger against all pretense and all pretentious work and all work left slack and unfinished. God, give me a restlessness whereby I may neither sleep nor accept praise until my observed results equal my calculated results, or in pious glee I discover and assault my error. God, give me strength. Give me strength. In a moment, James Hilton and John Lund will return. In the meantime, here's what I promised to tell you about the new Hallmark Dolls of the Nations. There are eight of them, each from a different country, and they make a wonderful gift for children. Children love them and learn from them, too, because inside each doll is a clever rhyme story about the land it comes from. Now listen, these colorful Hallmark Dolls that children love and that educators say are a fine influence on young minds cost only 25 cents each and are as easy to send as any Hallmark greeting card. There is a big Hallmark doll collector's album to keep them in, too, and it's only 50 cents. For only one dollar, you can get the album and two Hallmark dolls of the nations. See them tomorrow at the store where you buy your Hallmark greeting cards. Now here again is James Hilton. Thank you for a great performance, John Lund. It was a fine portrayal of one of my favorite characters. And for the makers of Hallmark greeting cards, I'd like to thank you for giving us such an enjoyable evening. Oh, it was a great pleasure for me, too. You must have a lot of fun reading all these fine stories in which you choose your Hallmark programs. I'd like to tell you that you Hallmark people win a big gold star in my memory book for the pleasure and happiness you bring to so many people, both by your radio programs and your fine greeting cards. Thank you. All of us who are associated with Hallmark like to feel we're adding to the happiness of others. And just as the doors of Hallmark Playhouse are always open to you, John Lund, I hope your doors will be open to us next week when we bring you Mrs. Parkington by Louis Brumfield and starring Rosalind Russell. Oh, I'll be listening, Mr. Hilton. Good night, John Lund. Ladies and gentlemen, the Community Chest Campaign is your opportunity to make one contribution to all your local agencies, health, welfare, and recreation. Nearly half the families in every Community Chest city benefit directly through Red Feather Aid. So please support the community chest. Everybody benefits, everybody gives. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Tonight's story was adapted for radio by Gene Holloway with music composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. John Lund will soon be seen in Miss Tatlock's Millions, a Paramount picture. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Louis Brumfield's Mrs. Partington, starring Rosalind Russell. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.